Okay, now that we have our few new actions of this.props.update password and update email, in our last video, I just did the update email, but you have to remember you have to add the update password as well. And then you also have to change the type. So see how this is updating the email, this is updating the password, and this is how read the reducer knows to call this like this item. So this switch, this is just a switch case statement um, within JavaScript, and it's just checking if the string matches update email. So that's how there's, this reducer knows to update the email field and not the password field. So if you were to have the same case statement, then it would kind of get mixed up. And so what I like to use while figuring out, while making sure that your, your actions are correctly calling the right reducers and updating everything correctly, I like to use a logger. So there's one more thing that we're gonna install, uh, another piece of middleware. So before we use thunk middleware to be able to call these dispatch functions, just like this dot props dot whatever function it may be, uh, we're gonna add another one called yarn uh, redux dash logger. Oh shit, yarn add redux. So what this does is literally just logs is Log it logs this. It logs the the before state of calling an action, the during state, so what's being passed in through that action, and then the resulting state of that action. And so, in order to use that, we have to go back to the app.js and import it just like we did the thunk middleware because it is another piece of middleware. And then you just did logger, Redux logger. And then just pass it in as middleware. So you can add as many um, pieces of middleware as you want. Uh, this is usually what I use for all of my projects. Uh, so I don't I don't know what other additions you can make, but you could add a bunch of different middlewares to make things a little bit easier. Uh, but the way we see that logger is if we do debug Chrome remotely, and we go to this console. So the reason I wanted to show you the logger is because before we were getting this.props.user, uh, the value was exactly the same whether you put it on each side, but you're supposed to have to put it in the, the email field of the user and the password field of the user. So we want to be able to make sure those are updating the right items. So there we go. So you can see it's every single keystroke, we get a new state. So you can see we're passing in, this is the previous state, uh, T-E-S-H-G-O, uh, and then the payload adds an I to it, and then it updates the email field of the user. So that works perfectly. And then let's do make sure password, password here. So it's calling update password, the type, the previous user and then the resulting state which is working perfectly awesome and so you can see that it's updating the state correctly honestly I'm not exactly sure why this is working with just the stat props that user I feel like that's magic because it's supposed to be this dot props that user dot password and dot email. I mean it's updating state correctly, so I uh, can't exactly explain that one. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so now we can see that our our state is updating correctly, but what happens if we go to another page? The idea is that we want this available throughout all the components. So we can actually see that if we add some functionality to our signup page. So we're just gonna copy and paste kind of everything from login for right now, because we're gonna reuse some of the same fields. Remember to rename from sign to login to sign up. Uh, we still want that user and then state.user. We still wanna be able to update email and password, because when they sign up, they still need those same fields. And then, uh, changes it to sign up. 
So now we have two pages, login and sign up, but how do we get the sign up page? So now we're gonna leverage React Navigation. So we go back to the this page and we're going to do button on press equals this dot props dot navigation dot navigate and then this is where we put in the name of the route we want to go to. So for sign up, we have to go to the auth navigator and the login screen is called login. And this is the item that we want to call, so sign up. The screen might be called something else. So if we do sign up screen, I know sometimes a little confusing if you name it the same way. Um, we want to call sign up, not sign up screen and not delete it either like I just did. So we're going to call sign up and we're going to do the ES7 syntax for a function. And then we have to also import it from React Native. Oh yeah, and we have to add a title. Sign up. So the title is required for this button function as a prop. What else did we miss? Oh, we didn't end it. I lost two mistakes. So we have our button with the title of sign up with an on press function of this props navigation dot navigate. And let's reload. Hey, look at that. So now, see that transition we have when we have this back button that is there because of React Navigation. So we're going to eventually customize this because I don't want the default weird shade of blue back button. Um, and we're going to put icons up there as well, just as we did in the tab navigator. But to show that this Redux is working, we could do sign up and we have that same field and we have, we're calling the same function, the same uh, action on each login and sign up page so that you don't have to have those same functions on each component. You just have one main action that you import and then that you could call. And so this is pretty cool in that you don't have local state for each login and sign up page. You don't have to pass it explicitly through props. You can just update the global state of Redux and then check that user and keep that user information once we go on to the other pages as well. And so there we go. There's our login and sign up page. It's very basic and very ugly. Um, we're gonna add some more fields to sign up like being able to upload a photo, being able to change your username, and then a little bit of bio about you. So uh, in the next couple of episodes, we're going to add some more fields to sign up and then add the ability to sign up with Firebase so that we can actually store and authenticate users the real way instead of just locally like we are now. So I hope you join me for those lessons and I'll see you there. Peace.